Australian for today. We'll talk about the flatus tube today. Um, when do we need to put a flatus tube in? Hamish. So the rectal infers that where does it go? In the rectum, yeah. So um, the rectal flatus tube, so obviously we're trying to let gas out, maybe some stool. Um, what situations would we put this type of tube in, Will? I've seen it in um, ICU when a patient might be um, intubated and um, you know having some diarrhea or, or things like that. Yes, that's a good idea. That's a bowel management sort of system. So yeah. help nursing staff. It's a bowel management. Um, and when is it used as a therapy? Um, Bulbulus? Yeah, bulbulus. Yeah. So basically, any time you think you can relieve obstruction from down below, you can try putting a flatus tube or a tube in. Um, Deb is standing right front of the camera. I'm looking for the camera. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Now, there's a good question this morning. Why can't we use a three way IDC? And yeah, look. A three-way IDC can be used in a situation, but there, there are some differences that make the rectal tubes slightly better for these situations. So um, that's a flatus tube there, and that's a three-way IDC. And I'll let you hand them around. Um, the rectal tube is slightly stiffer. It has bigger holes, whereas a three-way IDC has got tiny holes for the drainage of you know, urine. And it's much more flexible. And so, if you're just trying to bypass something at the anus, just for whatever reason, they've got a really tight anus and you know, their rectum's all swollen up, filled up, and you just wanna, you just wanna do it like a permanent PR to keep the anus open, you could put a three-way IDC in. But um, the rectal tube is actually designed, particularly for Cheryl's indication of a bulbulus. It's, it's very radically supposed to really get up to the midpoint of the mesentery where the sigmoid twist involves. And so in theory, the flatus tube is supposed to be able to get all the way up to there. And obviously having a slightly firmer consistency is gonna mean that it's gonna get there. Whereas if you try to put this floppy thing in, it will probably just coil up in the rectum somewhere. Um, so any time, you know, so the time you can use these is if, if there was a blockage, you know, there's a cancer down there, and you think you can get the tube past to give some temporary relief. Um, if there's a blockage due to a bulbulus, you can use it there. You can use it for nursing bowel management. Um, and um, the other situation where you can use it is if they have an eyelid. So often the consultation will be, you know, you've got a CT or a chest X-ray or an abdominal film that's got dilated large bowel loops, and you don't know if it's an obstruction or an ileus, and if from a CT scan you determine that it's an ileus, then you figure out how far along the bowel is. Now obviously if the ileus stops at the splenic flexure, that's not going to reach the splenic flexure. But if the ileus stops at the um, rectosigmoid junction, then you've got a chance of getting this at, past the rectosigmoid junction and then relieving all that pressure. So um, I guess the message is, you know, when you see obstruction, don't automate large bowel obstruction or, or large bowel eyes. Don't automatically think, oh, can't do anything, you know, it has to be surgical. If the obstruction or the eyelids is low enough, you can reach it with a flatus tube. Um, with our patient that we're dealing with at the moment, as you know, we've all reviewed the CT this morning. Um, the patient has a uh, end colostomy, and we think we're able to bypass. Uh, the obstruction which we think is occurring at the level of where the stoma is coming through the muscle. And that's probably only you know, seven or eight centimetres in. And um, I'll probably put that in, cut, cut it there, and then leave it, into, leave it in the stoma bag and hopefully you know, that will temporarily bypass the situation. Any other questions or queries about the flatus tubes and three-way IDCs? Well, I won't talk about three-way IDCs. It was more just to compare. You can use that if it's lower down, but obviously if it's further up, it's going to be hard. You often see another type of rectal tube where there is a balloon attached to it and it allows kind of platus and things passing through. 
yeah, um, that's true. more permanently in? What, yeah. what's, what's the difference with, with I'd that? I'd say that would be more for here, for yeah, okay. ICU band gotcha. management. Whenever I put it in for treatment, um, I'm always happy for them to fall out. Yeah. And if they fall out, I, I usually don't particularly expect them to be put back in. Gotcha. Yeah. I mean, they're not hard to be put in. You know, a any doctor who has some nous and idea about tissue is going to know when they feel resistance that they shouldn't push too hard. Um, but yeah, I, I guess in theory you, you can cause damage if you push this fairly firm s structure potentially through the bowel wall. What you'll sometimes see is if the volvulus, which in the olden days you could sometimes fix with a rigid sigmoidoscope, often now we do a flexible sigmoidoscope which is a colonoscopy in theatre, resolve their sigmoiditis, the, the sigmoid bulge, sorry, and then we put this tube in as far as possible just to temporarily de keep the coal, the sigmoid decompressed and that way hopefully stop the bulge reforming for a few days. In those situations, if and when the phase tube comes out, I'm happy to leave it out. Yeah. Any other questions, queries, worries about rectal tube? So always keep it in mind as a possible solution anytime you see large bowel obstruction or large bowel iris. Is this a possible solution? Because yeah. often it is and, and often it's missed.